-hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna be advising my clients today, John and Jane, and it's kind of like a second advisor meeting, so they've already come in once, and I'm gonna be speaking to you guys as if you're my clients. So, welcome back in, John and Jane. I know it's been a few weeks since we've last spoken. Thank you so much for getting back to me with your W-2 forms, all your insurance documents, as well as your tax forms from last year. It's been really helpful for me to create an adequate financial plan for the both of you and for your family. As always, if you have any questions throughout today, feel free to interrupt me with anything you'd like to add or any comments you'd like to add to anything. So going right into it, this is the current budget I've created for you. With all those documents you sent in, I was able to find out that you have about $14,500 coming in every month after taxes. From there, you have about $6,700 worth of expenses and $3,400 worth of savings. And then I want you to pay special note to this cash balance all the way at the bottom, that $4,400. That's the money we're gonna be looking at directly today on what we're going to be doing with that. So now here's more of a breakdown of all of those segments. So your monthly income, we have both of your monthly incomes put together. We have, for your spending, we have your car, your mortgages, all your gas, as well as just the cost to have children, groceries. And then for your savings, we have both of your 401ks. So now let's look at what we're gonna do with that $4,400. So top of your list right now is buying a vacation home. So we're gonna look extensively at different mortgage options that are gonna work well within your budget. We're next gonna look at investing in 529 plans for your children. You've already started modestly investing in two of your children's 529s. We're gonna create more of a schedule for that as well as how we're gonna go about investing over time. And lastly, we're gonna look more at allocating your life insurance. John, you currently have one life insurance policy. We want to increase that a little bit and also add a policy for you, Jane. So, on to the first point, buying a vacation home. Buying a vacation home is super tough and I'm glad you guys want to take this next step. There's plenty of room in your budget to do this. This is some of the current prices of vacation homes as well as the associated mortgage that goes along with it. Notice how I don't go above $400,000. That is the max amount I want you guys to spend on a vacation home. That's because that $4,400 that we spoke about, that would essentially, a $2,200 mortgage would cut that in half. So I don't want you spending more than $400,000 on a vacation home. And next meeting, we're gonna go more in depth on getting that loan available, as well as just saving for those closing costs and down payment for the home. So on to our second point, which is 529 plans for your three children. So you have goals of funding $60,000 worth of 529s for all three of your children. And 529s can be rolled over to additional children if one decides not to go to college. And if it's not used at all, there's just that 10% penalty, which you're aware of. So as of right now, you have $20,000 invested for your daughter, Kim. And Kim's gonna be going into college in 2030. So you have some time to grow that money. And in order to get it to that $60,000, we're gonna need to invest $5,000 a year. So, if we invest $5,000 a year, we will get her to that $60,000. Next, we have your son, Matt. Matt's currently at $5,000, but he's not going into college until 2033. So, we have a few more years for his money to grow. We're also going to need to invest $5,000 for him annually. And then lastly, we have your son, Nate. He's going to college in 2037, so 2038, sorry. So you have the most time to wait to invest in his. So his is the lowest at $3,750. Also keep in mind that I have this total monthly up here on the side. That's all of them combined and put on a monthly basis. So that $1,100 is all you need to invest to fund all three 529 plans. And that $1,100 is going to go down over time. As Kim enters college, you're no longer paying for her 529. And as Matt enters college, you're no longer paying for his 529. So that $1,100 is only going to go down. So last on our agenda today is to talk about life insurance. John, you have a $200,000 policy as of right now. And that's not really a lot of life insurance when it comes to adequately caring for your family in case of an emergency. So I would like to increase that by adding an $800,000 policy to that to increase your total benefit to a million dollars. Once it's at a million dollars, that's about five times your salary, so that's a nice rule of thumb for a minimum of life insurance. Jane, you have no life insurance, so I would like to also take five times your salary and get you to a $250,000 benefit amount. And then those premiums are gonna put you at about $400 a month total. So that, again, is gonna be coming out of that 4,400 excess money we talked about earlier. 
So next meeting, we're gonna talk more about that vacation home and where we're gonna get the loans, as well as just how we're gonna start planning for those down payments, as well as any other closing costs that go along with the vacation home. We're also gonna talk more about retirement planning, what age we plan to take that, pension, social security, all of those other factors. We're also gonna talk more about estate and trust planning. You have three children and they're not in your will at the moment, so we're gonna update the will and get everything set up for legacy planning. But just to recap today, we talked a lot about your vacation planning and that is your priority number one. And now that I've given you that $400,000 budget, I encourage you to go out, look, and see what's available to you in the cities you'd like to look for. And then we'll come back, reconvene, and figure out where we wanna go from there. In addition to that, we talked about those 529s, so we're gonna set up those schedules, get that $1,100 out every month, and start planning for each child. And lastly, we need to start setting up those life insurance policies right away and get those rolling. If there's any additional questions, I know I threw a lot of numbers at the two of you today. It's all gonna be in your email. I send the slides back out to you, but if there's anything I can answer for you right now, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Who has a question for Abby? Somebody help me out and come up with a question. Um, do John and Jane have, or like, okay, say they had another kid, yeah. how would you kind of move some of the money around to say for their um, college? Definitely. So. If they had another child, we, there's room in the budget, if, even if they get that $400,000 house and they're paying that $1,100 and then that $400 premium for insurance, there is still room to add a few thousand dollars for another child's college fund, especially if they started right away. They haven't started as much with their other children, but if they start before the child's even born, say, it could only be like 2000 a year. So it would just be way less money they do. So just the earlier they start, and now that they have a better idea, the better. So it would be easier to start off. Harrison? Seems like those kids are like kind of old enough that to the reason why they're not in the will or kind of anything stuck to them, is there a reason that like they kind of pushed it off or like haven't done in past meetings? Yeah, John and Jane kind of have like a complicated family situation. They only have two of their kids, or one of their kids full time. The other two are shared with like a divorce type of situation. So this is like only their second meeting with a financial advisor ever. So their initial will only has just the two of them in it. So it's definitely something that's on their priority list that we need to set up, but that's kind of the reason the complicated like family situation there for I have a question, Abby. Do they have savings for an emergency fund? They do. They do have funds that I didn't put in here that I didn't want to even like, we're not even touching those because okay. they have already, I think it's a $10,000 savings set up for emergencies, as well as like they like to save a few for like vacation funds. Those I didn't even like add in because it's not money we want to play with or touch at all. Terrific. Thank you so much. Thank you.